In previous lessons, we learned about free energy changes under standard conditions. Standard conditions are a very limited set of conditions, so we should probably understand the relationship between standard and non-standard free energy changes. To help us do this, let's compare the equation H2O liquid in equilibrium with H2O gas, which has a standard free energy change of a positive 8.59 kilojoules per mole. This indicates that this is a non-spontaneous process. However, compare this to your experience of a puddle of water evaporating. How can this puddle of water evaporate if the standard free energy change for this process is positive, indicating it's a non-spontaneous process? You should recall that standard conditions require all gases to be at one atmosphere pressure. However, for a puddle of water on the floor, the pressure of the water vapor above the puddle is much less than one atmosphere. In order to understand why this water spontaneously evaporates, we need to understand the free energy changes under non-standard conditions. This is indicated by a delta G reaction without the superscript zero. The free energy change of a reaction under non-standard conditions is given by the equation delta G reaction equals delta G reactions under standard conditions plus RT ln Q. The R is the universal gas constant which has a value of 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. The T is the temperature in Kelvin units and the Q is the reaction quotient which you should recall from previous lessons. For reactions that are only in the gas phase we'll use the Q sub P whereas for reactions that are in the aqueous phase, we'll use Q sub C. Let's look at an example that could help us explain why a puddle of water might evaporate. We'll do this by asking the question, will a puddle of water spontaneously evaporate at 25 degrees Celsius on a dry day when there is very little moisture in the air so that the vapor pressure of the water is 5.00 times 10 to the negative third atmospheres? We'll recall from the previous slide that the equilibrium between liquid water and water in the gas phase has a standard free energy change of positive 8.59 kilojoules per mole. To begin this analysis, we'll notice that the pressure of the gas is not equal to one atmosphere pressure. That means that in order to answer the spontaneity question, we'll need to find the free energy change for this reaction under this non-standard condition. So that gives us the equation delta G reaction equals delta G naught reaction plus RT ln Q. For the second step, we'll recall that the standard free energy change is given. The temperature is given, although we'll need to convert this to Kelvin, and the R is known, although we'll need to convert from joules to kilojoules. Once we've done that, we could find the reaction quotient based on the equilibrium constant expression for this equilibrium. We know that Q is going to equal the pressure of the water in the gas phase. It will not involve the water in the liquid phase since in equilibrium constant expressions we ignore substances in the solid or liquid phase. Therefore, the value of Q is going to be 5.00 times 10 to the negative 3. We can now plug in the values and calculate the value of the delta G for the reaction. So we have delta G reaction equals 8.59 kilojoules per mole plus 8.314 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin multiplied by 298.2 Kelvin multiplied by the natural log of 5.00 times 10 to the negative 3. When we multiply these final three terms together we see that the free energy change for the reaction is equal to 8.59 kilojoules per mole plus a negative 13.1 kilojoules per mole or that the free energy change for the reaction is negative 4.5 kilojoules per mole. So does water evaporate under these conditions? Since the free energy change is negative, that means that the evaporation of water on a dry day at 25 degrees Celsius is spontaneous, which agrees with the experience that we've observed in the past. After watching this video, you should be able to describe the difference between the standard free energy change for a reaction and the non-standard free energy change for a reaction. 
you should also be able to calculate the value for the free energy change for a reaction based on the standard free energy change for the reaction and the reaction quotient Q.